their feet. <laughs> All right, so we are going to transition into our message this morning, and I'm excited to talk to you on a topic that the uh, people back in the sound booth and the words screen missing that don't have any words on, because when we were worshiping, God totally changed the message. So praise the Lord, sister. So you can sit back and just shout me down, okay? So I want you to turn to Mark chapter 5 this morning. Turn over to Mark chapter 5, and we are going to continue our series, Whatever It Takes. And I want to talk to moms today, but as we were worshiping, I was just kept getting stuck with this topic, and so I feel like we just need to talk about it, and hopefully it'll apply to you moms and all of you, okay? And maybe I'll do a podcast or something later this week with my mom message, because it was good, I thought, but sometimes you got to be obedient, so I'm just being obedient. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice, and Miss Megan Gilmore taught us this morning that obedience can be fun. So I'm going to have fun, all right? But I went and grabbed my sweat towel because I don't know what's going to come out, so here we go. Mark chapter 5, and starting in verse 25. Mark chapter 5, starting in verse 25. It says, that's not where we're going. Oh, I'm, well, that is where we're going. I'm just in Mark chapter 6, so sorry. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. <laughs> Woo, help me, Jesus. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. We're talking about Jesus here. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around to the, in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered. And yet you can ask who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, told, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. Let's pray together this morning. God, I thank you for your word. And I thank you for the way your Holy Spirit speaks to us even as we come into your presence today. I pray that you'd give me the words to say because I don't have any notes. And I just ask that you would make the story come alive so that someone here would push into your presence to know you with all their heart. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so yesterday, I have, over the last year, had the privilege of going to Life Coach Academy at Larksong here downtown, and I had to make up an on-site because the last one we had that I, or I missed one when we were in Africa, and so yesterday, or Friday and yesterday, were all-day trainings for Life Coach training, and I totally recommend you do it. If you've never done it, check out larksong.com or come over here and talk to Megan or Evan. It will change your life. And yesterday was probably one of the ones that was the most transformative for me. And the way the day started was they told us that we were going to talk about conflict. Anybody like conflict? Yippee, skippy. If you're like me, you don't like conflict. Some people like conflict. In fact, at the end of the day, one lady was like, I feel so energized because I love conflict. And I thought, oh gosh, that's so horrible. Like I don't like conflict conflict. And so I knew going into this weekend, because I'd heard from other people, that things were going to come up and it would be emotional and it would be hard. But you know what? Sometimes you got to embrace hard, right? Sometimes you got to say, in order to do, like to become who I need to be, I got to do the work to get there. And healing is a process. That's one thing you see. We, we, if you've been in church a long time or you've watched church on TV, people like talk about these altars down here and it's like they come and they're like, bam, and they're just gone and they fall out and they start wailing and then all of a sudden their whole life changes. Well, I, I just hope you know that's not always true. Sometimes God does that. Can I just be real? I've been in other countries. It doesn't always happen here in the U.S. That's a whole other message, series, topic, theology probably. But I've been in other con- countries where I've watched people just like boom and be radically healed or radically saved or things change. But a lot of times in our culture, the way that God moves in our midst and the way that God moves is he does still heal and he does still change and he does still work it out for you. But it doesn't happen immediately. It's a process. And sometimes learning is a process. You don't wake up one day and think, today I know how to deal with conflict. 
There's been days I've thought today I know how to deal with conflict and then I'll go about, get to about 8.30 a.m. and I'm like, oh shoot, I guess I don't, right? Because learning is a process. And so we started the day yesterday and Dr. Dan Poff is one of the lecturers who teaches this class in particular. And I've gotten to know Dan. He's kind of become a mentor of mine. I'm doing some work with him. And he's just an incredible guy that has studied um, psychology, right? Psychology. And he's a psychology professor over at IWU. He runs, helps run the Center for Life, Calling, and Leadership. He develops young leaders. And he is trained on systems and relational, how to, how to help relationships and all that stuff. This guy knows some things. And, and if you don't know if anybody who knows some things, get some new friends, all right? Like, you need to have people in your life who know things, because when they know things, then you grow when you're in relationship with them. If you're hanging out with the person who's just always like, life's so horrible, and I am just don't even know, and I don't really care, I'm just waiting to die, get a new friend. Because you need people that are going to pull you up and push you towards your destiny and not just let you be down here and be like, well, I guess I don't know how to do anything and it's just okay because my friends don't either. You don't change the world. We're talking about doing whatever it takes to build the church and restore the world. You can't do that passively. So you got to push in. And so we started yesterday. And, and when you are in a coaching setting, you design an alliance, you talk about what is free to happen in that area, and someone used the term, and they said, I want today to be about push me. And something down in here is like, oh no, <clears throat> right? Because if you're like me, if you know if you're going to get pushed, it's going to hurt. If you've worked out at any point in your life, like I have, like the three times I did, like, you know, <laughs> right? Amen. You know. That when you leave the gym, even sometimes right when you leave, it doesn't hurt too bad. But day two, day three, you're like, if I had hair, I wouldn't be able to wash it. Because, you know, I'm so sore because I have been pushed to the max. And what happened yesterday morning is, is something for me that I feel like I will never forget. I said, as we were talking about this, I said, can we underline me? Because I feel like I really need to be pushed. And Dr. Poff came over and he wheeled his chair right up into my face like this, like got right in my face, which is kind of awkward. Yeah, yeah. Like you give me your personal space? Uh, yeah, yeah. You like this, Janet? Back off. Okay, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I don't trust her. She'll smack me. He got up in my face and he said, DJ, do I have permission to push you? Like looked me in the eye and I said, yes. And he said, do I have permission to call some things out in you that I see are wrong because I love you so much that I don't want you to stay there? Yeah. And I was like, yes. And he backed up and I agreed to be pushed. And this morning as we were worshiping and I always over worshiping, I'm thinking through things and praying through things. And I just felt God say, today you need to just tell the church to push towards me and that you as their pastor need to challenge them in some things to push you. So I'm going to ask you this morning, do I have your permission to push you? All right, do I have your permission to push you to say to you that there are some things that I think for us as the church that if we want to do whatever it takes, we got to do some things to push towards God because the only way we will ever impact the world around us is if we spend time in his presence first. And if we don't push into his presence, then we're never going to see change. When we get up here and we talk about, we've been talking a lot about this altar being opened. I told you guys, God told me to move the pews. Then there was one Sunday, there was like 40 people up here. And I was like, thank you, Jesus, it's working. And then the next week there was no one here. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to be obsessed with how people worship. That is not my heart. But hear me in this. Hear me in this. You will not change unless you get in God's presence. You are sitting in a church that's the result of God's presence. You are watching someone who leads a nonprofit that he's not qualified to lead, not because I just had a good idea, but because I was fasting and I was praying and I was getting in his presence and pushing past all the crap that tried to keep me from him to say, God, I need you so much. I need to hear your voice. I need you to speak to me. I need you to show me what I'm called to do. And now five years later, I get to run an organization that impacts kids and impacts the world, and I go, God, how did that happen? Because I dared to push into his presence. And I think for some of us, we come into church and we know we're a welcoming place and everyone's welcome and you're free to worship how you worship and you don't have to shout like I shout. This is how I talk at home sometimes. The last week, my wife was like, can you please keep it down, Weston's sleeping? And I said, don't talk to me about who I am, woman. And then I... 
And then I apologized. And I said, I was like, can't you just realize this is who I am? And she goes, I do realize that, but sometimes it gets annoying. So I'm working on knowing when I can be passionate or when I need to be a little quieter. So you don't have to be like me. This is not a message to say you need to worship like me, you need to look like me, you need to pursue God like I pursue him. But it is to say that I believe every single one of you, regardless if this is your first time in church or the last time, if you want to see change happen in your life, it will not happen unless you press in and push towards the presence of God. You have to push into his presence. In Mark chapter 5, the story that we read this morning is one of my favorite stories in the New Testament because it shows a lot, uh, not only of the characteristics of Jesus as the healer and as God, but it shows a lot of the characteristics of Jesus internally. Picture that scene, right? There's hundreds of people flocking to Jesus. It's like Jesus is the Bono, right? Right? Like Jesus is like the guy and they're all like, I got to get to this guy. I got to get to this guy. I'm going to get there. And so they're pressed in and they're pushing towards Jesus and they're all physically pushing towards him. And you would think if you've got people pushing all over you and they're all up in your space, right? And they're all here that, that you're not really noticing what each person is going through. Because if you're like me, you're already sweating, right? I've been talking for three minutes and I'm already sweating. Like you're like, get off of me. I need my space. Like you're irritated because there's all these people around you and they're trying to get to you so they can go with you to where you're heading. And then this woman comes up and says, I need to be healed. And if I could just touch the hem of his robe, I know I'll be healed. Which that is an incredible incredible there's so much in that that this woman would say you know what i see that god he's fully man and he's fully god and he came to the earth and i hear what he's saying and i know that i can't get changed unless i push towards him and so i'm gonna push towards him to see happen what i know needs to be happen but if you look at the story simply from the story and it's a woman and she pushed and she has the issue of blood and you're like, yeah, she pushed towards Jesus. What you don't understand is the cultural context of this woman. She had no right to push towards Jesus. She had no right according to the law, according to the systems of that day, according to religion at that time to push towards Jesus because we don't know exactly what her issue of blood is, but you don't have to be very creative to imagine what it could be. And if you were in that state... You would not be allowed to be out in public, let alone push towards a ruler or a king or the, the God of the universe. Her religion would have told her to stay home, to sit in her mess, to stay where she's at. She can't possibly go out and push towards God because of her mess. And so the system of that day said, you have no right to go towards this man who can heal you. I wonder how many of you come in here on a weekly basis, and you feel like, I, I'm not worthy to give God my worship. I, I, I've done so much in my life. If you only knew what I did, I, I can't push towards him. I'm, I'm actually repelling him, not because I'm afraid like, that he won't accept me, but because I don't even feel worthy to give myself to him. And so you come in week after week and you sit and you observe and you watch people worship and you think, oh man, that person's worshiping today. They must really be spiritual. The days I worship the hardest is when my life is the most jacked up. The days I lay on this floor and sob like a baby is not usually I'm like, ah, life is good. I'm like, God, I need you. I need your presence. I need you to change this situation. I need you to heal this relationship. I need you to break through because this church is going to close if we don't get some money. Can I be real? I've been in that place, in this altar, this year. Begging God, saying, God, if we, we cannot stay open another month, we got 300 people here on a Sunday and we can't keep the lights on. What's going on? And the only reason you're sitting here this morning, I believe, is because people joined with me and pushed into his presence and broke some things. And we're doing just fine now. Thank you, Jesus. All right? Because we pushed into his presence. But those times when you're worshiping the hardest and you're pouring your heart out, and you're, yeah, whether it's at church or at home, and you're, you're giving your all to God, it's not because you have it all together. 
And I think sometimes we're scared to come into God's presence. We're scared to worship in the altar. We're scared to to shout. We're scared to jump up and down because what will people think? You know what? Who cares what people think? Do you need God? I can't, I don't have time to sit around and care what people think. I've been doing ministry for 12 years, five years almost full time now, ministry. And if I could write a book, I could write a book on the things people have told me I should do. I could write a book on it. People love to tell me what I should do with my life. Now, they don't want to support it. They don't want to be there, but they sure will applaud me after. We knew you could do it. I'm like, seriously? Right? People, who cares what people think? This is the God of the universe, and you have a divine plan and a divine destiny on your life, and if you don't get to him, you will never be healed. You will never see your vision come to pass. You will never hear his heart for you. You have to push into his presence no matter how you feel. And this woman is standing there and she's got this issue and she knows she's unclean and she knows she's unworthy and she knows that if I actually try to get to Jesus that people are gonna say she smells bad and she looks bad and she doesn't deserve it and they're gonna try to cast her out because she's not an idiot. She's seen the way they treated the woman caught in the act of adultery. She's seen the way they treated the Samaritan woman. She knows that in this society, as a woman, she's nothing. She doesn't have any value or any worth according to their day which thank God we've progressed. Because if I didn't have some woman in my life, let me just tell you, we won't even go there because it would be bad. I'm just going to say it because I'm saying, if I didn't have women preachers in my life, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Joyce Meyer has impacted my life probably more than any other preacher on the planet. And there are people who said, she can't preach, she's a woman. Megan Gilmore preached leadership this morning. And a lot of times in churches, we're like, well, woman, well, they can preach, but let's not give them the title. No, I'm like, you need to be a pastor. You need it because you bring an authority with the word of God. I don't care what sex you are. Thank God that we've gotten to a point where we realize under that law and under that thought process and under all of that garbage that people had gotten in and not because it was their fault. It's all they've been taught, right? We, We didn't know. But thank God we can be living in an age where we can hear from anyone that God speaks to. That all are welcome to come to the creator of the universe and let him spill on them their purpose and then go walk in it regardless of how they look, talk, see, smell, taste, color their skin. It doesn't matter because he loves them and he values them. And the beautiful thing in that story is that was the heart of Jesus for this woman. And she comes towards him. And he's got all these people pressed around him and they're pushing at him and they're pushing on him and he's probably annoyed a little bit, I don't know, or he's feeling like, man, like, man, they just, they just need me so bad and they want me. What, what, what was that? Like, imagine it, right? How, how would you notice the one person that touched the hem of your robe? Like, if you come up here and all these people are gathered around me and you just grab my cuff of my pant, how, how did I notice that? Because it wasn't in the actual physical act of touching his robe. It was the pushing into his presence that the minute she grabbed hold of him, he was like, whoa, something just went out of me. You know what's so cool about Jesus is that when you get into his presence, he may not even know what he's doing for you, but just the power in the name of Jesus begins to set you free. How cool is that? That's why he says in the word that, that you'll get to heaven. Some people will get to heaven and say, God, in your name, I did this, and I drove out demons, and I healed people, and I saw people, I saw people delivered, and I saw, I saw the dead people raised, and he'll look at you and say, depart from me, I never knew you. And you're like, but I did all this. And he's like, yeah, because my name has so much power, no matter what, anyone can use it. You use the name of Jesus, and bam, things get transformed. And so when you get into his presence, You just get into the place where you can push past all the junk and touch him and say, God, I need you. I need you to heal me. I need you to set me free. I need you to repair this relationship. I need you to restore my mind. I need you to do work on me. I'm willing to have the work done. I'm willing to have the haters hate me. I'm willing to have the people say I suck and I'm in trouble and I'll never get there. I don't even care because I'm going to push so hard to get into your presence because I need what you have. How bad 
Do you want his presence? And do you want his presence simply for an emotional frenzy? Because guys, you can get that if you want it. But if you get into his presence and you don't leave changed, there's no point. There's no point. And this woman goes and she touches the hem of his robe and everything changes. The healing goes out from Jesus onto her and she leaves restored just because she pushed into his presence. You see, we as a church, I think, have a decision to make. I don't talk about a lot of stuff a lot of the times because I'm a pansy. Because <laughs> it's not popular in our age to tell people they need to push into God's presence. It's more like God loves you. He's got it for you. You don't have to do anything. And it's, there's truth to that, right? The cross finished it all for us. Like, like you don't have to do anything if you don't want to and you still can follow Jesus. You can still go to heaven. But if you want to make an impact on the earth and do whatever it takes and be a church that doesn't just say, oh, we know we've heard of that church in Marion, but we want to be a church that people that, that, that are in other cities hear of what's going on in Marion. I don't know if you want that, but that's what I want as your pastor. I'm not content to have one church. I want hundreds of churches. I'm not content to have three churches and one school in Africa. I want churches all over the globe. I'm not content to just have the five Center for Success locations in Michigan while the one here we can't even keep funded. I'm just not. I'm sorry. I don't like it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to keep pushing forward. And I guess what I'm asking you this morning is, are you going to push with me? Because it takes work. It's the process I talked about at the beginning. It doesn't happen overnight. But, 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 if you will press in to the presence of God, he will begin to fill you up and give you the gifts and give you the things and give you the vision so you're able to do it. Some of you might be sitting here this morning and you came in on a Mother's Day Sunday and you're just ready to go to brunch, which is great. I hope you enjoy brunch. It'll be awesome. But you came in not really expecting to be challenged because it's a Hallmark holiday. As pastors, we just cater our messages to the Hallmark holiday. And I'm standing down here worshiping and God says, people aren't really pushing into my presence today. And I was like, well, God, it's Mother's Day. Surely you understand. You know how much thought I had to put into what to get Kelsey? West doesn't know what to get her. I had to figure it out. And then as I'm thinking about it, I had to think of what she would think if I actually got her what I wanted to get her because she's frugal. And so instead of the white gold earrings, we got the silver earrings for $18, you know? Because I knew if I got her $300 earrings, I'd get in trouble. <laughs> it's a lot of work, right? So I'm like, God, you know, it's Mother's Day. I had to do all this, figure out what to get her. I had to get Weston ready this morning because... Kelsey had to work, and then I got to figure out what to do for lunch because it's Mother's Day, so I got to honor my mother. This is just me, right? So, so maybe today people aren't really pushing in, but I'll, I'll talk about it next week. And God said, people need to push into my presence, not for some emotional frenzy, but because if you don't push past, take this the right way, the junk in our culture we spend $10 on a card for our mom, but we can't feed a child. Right? I'm just as God. I'm, I'm not, I'm don't. Yeah, I get it too. I know. I know I'm wearing these. I was telling the worship team about my cool shoes. My wife said I was cool enough to get Converse. And I was like, woo! I know. I buy into the American dream too, guys. I do. But can I just tell you real, be real, real with you? That don't just judge my life by what I have and what, I, what you see of my life. Because God has killed us in so many ways to surrender, to give, and give. And I'm not saying this arrogantly. Please don't hear me wrong. But some of the things that you see are because we've been blessed because of what we've done. And some of you are like, well, I can't even get a financial miracle. Well, how much do you give? And I'm, it's not about an amount. This is not, I'm not, I wasn't even, I don't know where this came from. I'm just talking. But like, it's not about money, Right? But you won't even get, you won't even give yourself to God. Heidi Baker said, I was listening to her this week, and she said, I'm so sick of talking about tithing. I don't want to tithe my income. I don't want to tithe my life. I want to jump into the bucket and say, God, all I have is yours. Every part of me is yours. Use me to build your kingdom. Use me to do whatever it takes to press into your presence. 
I'm not just going to give you part of me. I'm going to give you all of me. And when we come in here together, my question for you as we wrap this up today is are you willing to push into his presence? And when we go home, are you willing to push into his presence so you can actually see what he sees? Because in his presence is where dreams are made. In his presence is where things start working. In his presence is where he speaks to you and he says, I love you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what people have told you you can't do. I don't care that your pastor's weird enough to talk about some weird thing on Mother's Day. I don't care. I don't care. I just want you to get into my presence. Because in my presence, (laughs) his word says there's fullness of joy. And I just wonder here this morning if some of you are struggling with joy in your life. Well, I don't want to be happy clappy. It's not about happy clappy. I'm not always happy clappy. Right? I've been through hell this year. I've told you guys about it. So it's not anything new unless you're new here. Then welcome, I've been through hell. Okay. But can I tell you today I've got more joy because it's deeper rooted down in me? And if there's one thing that I've learned and that my mentors have told me watching my life this year, is that DJ, you have a newfound passion for the gospel. You've got a newfound passion for his presence. Getting into his presence doesn't take all the junk you have to work through away. She was still in her mess on the way there. But when you connect with God, everything changes. And he begins to heal you from the inside out. The woman with the issue of blood, I'm sure, had more issues than the blood issue. If you've been devalued and overlooked and unnamed and unwanted your whole life, there were some emotional things that I sure, I bet in that moment, didn't, everything didn't just change. She had to learn who God was. She had to learn who she was as a daughter of the king. She had to learn who she was as part of society, regardless of the fact that men had always shamed her. Because now a man loved her enough to heal her, and she went, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, I'm physically healed, but I got to figure that out. It takes work to figure it out. But if you're willing to push yourself into his presence, God starts the work. Philippians says, he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. I was griping to God a few weeks ago because if you were here at the beginning of the year, I preached that message about this being the year of completion. And I said, God, it's not complete. And he said, DJ, it's only March. Oh, okay. But now it's May. And actually, a lot of things are happening, and God is opening doors. It's amazing. In fact, next week, be here, because we're going to share some things with you about the building and the renovations and introduce you to our our interns. It's going to be awesome. And I was going to say I was going to preach a great message, but I don't know what I'm going to preach, because who knows? God might change it, so who knows? But but you should be here, because we're going to tell you some awesome updates of things God's doing. But I was like, God, it's not done. It's, it's It's not. And he's like, DJ, it's not, it's not time yet. I'm not going to do it today because you're not going to learn along the way what I need to teach you. But I feel like today what my, I guess, call to us is, is are you willing to push into his presence enough to hear him say what he needs to say to you? You don't have to. This is, there's no judgment. You can come on a Sunday morning and your response to God can just be, I wish they'd turn that music down. That's fine. I get that. It's loud. We're working on that too, just so you know. Not, I'm, okay, that's, anyways, I'm getting myself in trouble. I say too much. Lord, forgive me. Okay. Staff, forgive me. Thank you. Okay. But don't, just stick around, okay? God's got some awesome things coming this year. Um, and don't get, those of you that like the loud music, don't, we're not getting rid of the music. Don't, don't, okay. Anyways. Whew. I need a time out. Okay. But I feel like, I feel like a lot of times as a church, we come in and we're like, I don't really know what I have to give, right? I've had a crappy week. I'm not really that excited about what God's doing in my life right now. 
And so we come in and we bring that lack of excitement or lack of joy and we're just kind of like, I got nothing for you, God. And can I just challenge you that those are the times when you need his presence the most? When you need to push in the hardest are the times when you don't have anything left to give? Because that's the Bible says that as your praise go up, his blessing comes down. What's blessing? Favor, increase. Psalm 112 says that blessed is the person who seeks God. And in the Amplified Bible, it blessed means happy, fortunate, and to be envied. And you wonder why you're not happy and why you're unfortunate and why no one's envying you because you're not spending time in his presence. And the way you get blessed is with his presence. So my call for us this morning is, will you say, I will push into his presence? I'm going to end it there, all right? If you'll stand with me this morning, will you push into his presence? And I'm going to challenge you to say, if that's something you're willing to do, then I want to pray for you this morning. But you know what? You got to take a stand if you're like, I'm doing this. You can't just, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. So what I want to say, and I don't, I know that not all of you are ready to commit to this. That's fine. Do not feel like you have to. But if you say, I want to take a step in my relationship with God and I want to push into his presence so I can truly hear his voice and truly know him and truly be a kingdom builder, then I want to invite you to walk down to this altar right now so I can pray for you. Thank you. If you want to push into his presence, I'm going to need some prayer team people. I'm going to need some elders. I know one of them's out of town. So Herschel, we got this brother. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your response. Like I said, those of you that are out there, this doesn't mean that you're any different. Just keep coming. Keep seeking God. Keep pursuing him, all right? You don't know the story of those that are here that say, I want to be pushed into his presence. Elder Herschel, where are you at, sir? Can I just dump some oil on my hands and you dump some oil on your hands? Man, this is when we need one of those shakers, like baptism. Where are those Catholic people that have all the kids? They might have some. Cool. All right. Cool, let's just pray in this place. I just want to invite you, if you're here, will you just put your hands out like this? Or if you're kneeling, that's fine. Just in a position of receiving from God to say, God, I've pushed down to this altar and now I need your presence in my life. So let's just pray and anoint people around here. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for the response to your word this morning, God. Lord, I thank you that you are moving and you are ruling and you are reigning in their lives, God. Lord, I thank you that they are pushing past all the garbage that people have told them in their lives that they can't be and they won't be and they'll never amount to anything. Lord, I thank you that you are moving in their lives and you are doing great things as they seek you, Lord. Your word says that if they will seek you, they will find you. If they will seek you with all their heart, they will be found by you. And so I pray right now that as they are pressing into your presence, as they're trying to seek you, as they're trying to find you, God, that you would answer them and that you would let them know that you love them and you have a great plan for them, God. I pray that you will move in their lives in incredible ways, God, that this wouldn't be just a physical or an emotional response, God, that, that this wouldn't just be so that they can say, oh, I went to the altar and, and, I'll, and I'm just going to go home and not be changed. But God, would you begin to move in this church, God, because of this response, Lord? Would you begin to move in this ministry, God, because of what people are saying, God? Would you begin to move into this place, in this place, God, because we're passionately pursuing you, God? Would you begin to move in our lives? Would you build into to every single person in this altar, God, vision and more vision and more life and speak to them about the purpose you have for them, God, and show them the love that you have for them and show them the great plan that you have for them and show them that if they will just touch the hem of your robe, if they will just push into your presence, God, they can experience change and they can be a world changer, God. Would you let this church be a church that just pushes into your presence passionately? that doesn't back down, that doesn't make excuses, that doesn't say, well, I had a bad week or I had a bad day or I just don't know anymore, God. Would you let them push into your presence and find the joy that only you can give them? And then would you let them go out of these walls and change this world? And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Will you guys put your hands together right now and praise God. He's so good. Awesome, 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 awesome. Praise God. Thank you, guys. Thanks for your obedience. Yesterday, I, uh, 
I got called out on some things. <laughs> I look at Megan because she's in charge. One of the things I, I realized yesterday was that I make so many excuses for why I don't get things done. I'm like, well, I'm busy, right? I, 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 I don't have time. And I felt like God said to me as I was excusing myself, Sometimes God's a little harsher with me. He loves me, but he's like, dude, shut up. You committed to this. You need to follow through on your commitment. So as your pastor, I want to ask you guys to follow through on this commitment. If you're in this altar now, make it a habit to be in this altar. Not for an emotional frenzy, because you need the presence of God. And when we come together corporately, there's something powerful that happens when we worship. So don't make excuses. Well, I had a bad week. I had No, no. get in his presence and watch him change you, all right? I love you guys. Thank you so much. For the rest of you, if you guys will all stand with me this morning, let's just, if you want to stay here and we'll just dismiss right now because I know you got to get to the buffet. (laughs) Happy Mother's Day to all the mommies out there. I'm going to go home and eat some leftover Chinese food. It's going to be amazing. I love you guys. Be here next week. We've got some awesome things to do, to talk about. We've got to worship. We've got to get in his presence together. Be here next week. It's going to be awesome. Before we go, if you need prayer for anything else in your life, our prayer partners are somewhere scattered around up here. They'd love to pray with you. If it's your first time here, you can go back to the Connect desk. We'd love to hear more about you and get to know you and follow up with you. Next week is next. If you want to know more about the church, we'd love for you to be part of that. And before we go, let's confess the blessing over ourselves and our week that my best and most blessed days are ahead of me. Love you guys. Happy Mother's Day, mommies. We'll see you guys next week.